Senator Dasko. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Before I begin my comments today, I would I wanted to congratulate Senator McAdam. And I also wanted to say that uh, today is also a special day for me. This is the fifth anniversary of the date that I was appointed to the Senate, along with uh, my, my dear colleague, uh, Senator Dalfong, to you too. And I would say to her that I have appreciated every single day here, or just about every day in this <laughs> chamber. And it is a great privilege to be here, so um, I just wanted to, to mark that. Now, this is not the topic of my discussion tonight, however fascinating it might be. Uh, but uh, I rise today to add my voice to Senator Simon's inquiry on the challenges and opportunities that Canadian municipalities face and to the importance of understanding and redefining the relationships between municipalities and the federal government. In the course of this inquiry, we have heard from honourable senators that over 80% of Canadians live in our urban areas, that they are engines of economic growth, and that municipal governments are on the front lines in dealing with the vital issues of the day. We have heard from colleagues with personal experience in municipal politics and intergovernmental relations, and we have heard creative ideas for reform, and there is much food for thought. Today I want to focus mainly on issues related to the topic of civic governance, particularly as it concerns my city of Toronto. Today in Toronto, in the middle of a mayoralty election, polling shows that the top issues for voters are housing, the cost of living, city infrastructure and taxes, crime and violence, uh, gun violence, and transit and traffic. Good governance and cooperation between Toronto and the other levels of government is part of the solution. Nevertheless, a series of events in recent years has highlighted the vulnerability of my city to decisions taken at the provincial level. By extension, every municipality in this country is similarly vulnerable to the provincial decisions I will describe given the disadvantageous constitutional status of cities in this country. Let me explain. In 2016, the City of Toronto redrew its city ward boundaries, increasing the number of wards from 44 to 47 in advance of the 2018 municipal election. This decision was based on an independence consult consultant's nearly four-year review, which highlighted the city's unprecedented growth, particularly in the downtown core, and concluded that an increasing number of wards was needed to achieve effective representation where every vote would have equal weight, known as voter parity. The recommended 47-ward option would achieve voter parity by the 2026 election, the consultants had told us, and the 2018 election was thus set in motion. The new government of Ontario, of Ontario had other ideas, however, none of which were shared with Ontario or Toronto voters during the provincial election campaign leading up to election day on June the 7th, 2018, five years ago tomorrow, Senator Delfon. Uh, rather, it was announced after that election in July and implemented in September of that year that the number of wards would be cut from 47 to 25 for the October 22nd municipal election. What a shock it was to the city with 242 candidates now fighting for half the seats with one month to go. And what a blow that was for democratic representation and civic autonomy. But there's more. Flash forward, fast forward to another June election in Ontario, this time in 2022, and yet another blow to civic democracy. Again, with no mention of it in the provincial campaign itself, the newly re-elected provincial government passed Bill 3, known as the Strong Mayors Act, which gives special powers to the mayors of Toronto and Ottawa to organize the political and bureaucratic structures of City Hall and to hire and fire top city officials to write the budget and more. As well, another provincial bill, 39, gives the mayors of Toronto and Ottawa 
the ability to put through bylaws in areas, get this related to provincial priorities, with the support of only one third of city council. As Toronto councillors and many, many others in my city and elsewhere have said, this bill clearly invalidates the will of voters and reduces the democratically elected city council to a tool for an agenda of another level of government. It is without question undemocratic. Colleagues, if Canada's largest city can be subject to these actions by a provincial government, any city in this country can find itself in the same situation. And I'm thinking of Edmonton and others. As creatures of the province under our Constitution, municipalities have no inherent powers, only the ones given to them by the provincial legislature. We often focus on the deleterious impact of this situation on fiscal arrangements which disadvantage Canadian municipalities. But we can see from my Ontario examples how civic governance, indeed democratic structures themselves, are also at risk. Our constitutional arrangements are at the root of the problem. However, the courts have consistently supported these arrangements even the controversial decision of the Ontario government to cut their number of wards in half in Toronto during the 2018 municipal campaign. The Supreme Court of Canada ruled five to four that Ontario was within its constitutional rights to do this. Now that still is a very close decision, but still, um, that's, that's what the court said. And the constitutional situation of the cities vis-a-vis -vis the provinces is highly unlikely to change in the near future since the provinces have no desire to give up control. But even outside of the drama of the Ontario situation, the so-called normal status of municipalities is fraught with disadvantages. As noted by University of Toronto professors Enid Slack and Thomas Hashard, municipalities have a semblance of authority in several policy areas, but have little power to make changes unilaterally. They have inadequate revenue sources and inadequate fiscal flexibility to meet their responsibilities. There is often unclear and overlapping jurisdiction among the three levels of government and much of Canada lacks appropriate regional governance structures, and this hinders cooperation. Even though cities are involved in an increasing number of policy areas, climate change, health care, economic development, immigration, public safety, to name just a few, their role in politics and policymaking is underappreciated and their voices are underrepresented. Professor Thomas Hashard of the Institute of Municipal Finance and Governance at the University of Toronto, in a 2022 paper entitled A Seat at the Table, outlines a series of reforms that would work to include municipalities in federal and provincial policymaking and collaboration to improve policy outcomes. These reforms include, first of all, beefing up the capacity of municipalities to, to participate effectively in intergovernmental inter relations through investment in staff, municipal associations, and increased regional coordination. Second, increasing municipal involvement in provincial policymaking. With the range of issues involving municipalities, it's not enough to silo them into one provincial ministry. Future models might involve a council for provincial municipal relations, or a set of councils focused, interprovincial councils focused on specific policy issues. A third idea, eliminating unfunded mandates where governments are tasked with responsibilities they cannot afford through, for example, explicit or implicit downloading of costs to municipal governments. This seems to happen to municipalities all the time. In Toronto right now, for example, the city is picking up costs of immigration settlement and highway maintenance, which fall outside of their areas of jurisdiction. 
ending unfunded mandates might be achieved through agreements that require consultation on the fiscal impacts of legislation and promises that resources will be provided to take on new responsibilities. And fourth, strengthening trilateral relations. Again, recognizing that so many issues cross jurisdictions, trilateral agreements can be helpful in policy areas such as economic development or mental health or so many others. These four reforms would give municipalities the voice they need and help achieve positive outcomes for citizens. Still, it takes goodwill on the part of policymakers and politicians to embrace such ideas and essentially it takes goodwill for provincial politicians to give up control. When it comes to my great city of Toronto and its future relations with Queen's Park, I'm not sure that will happen. With the prospect of a new mayor with different priorities and different approaches from our provincial government after the municipal election on June 26, it's hard to be optimistic about future cooperation. And I sure hope that I will be proven wrong on that score. I began with comments about the issues which concern people in my city, housing, the cost of living, city infrastructure, taxes, crime, gun violence, traffic and transit. Good governance and cooperation across three levels of government are a big part of the solution. Politicians have to understand that it's not a zero-sum game. By sharing power, working together, and giving municipalities a voice, the result is good politics and good policy and a stronger democracy. Thank you. You have a question. Will you accept the question, Senator Dasko? I will. Uh, the time is late, I understand, so a brief question. Yes. Canada is not the only country where three orders of government uh, fight for power, fight for resources, uh, fight for stability. Uh, I can think of Germany, for instance, and I can think of the United States. Does any country do it worse than us? <laughs> Senator Dasko? Well, Senator Omidvar, that is an excellent question. I don't have uh, a, a great answer because I have not studied this in an international scene, but I think everybody in this room is aware of the battles and struggles uh, between, especially between our municipalities and our, our provincial governments. And in our chamber, we have uh, provincial, uh, we have uh, uh, municipal uh, politicians, uh, um, former mayors, um, and uh, those who have been intimately involved in municipal politics and they have, they have uh, worked these corridors, they know what the issues are and, and these are truly difficult issues to, to deal with. And my point here is really trying to say you can win if you get along with the other levels of government. I mean, you don't have to fight them. It can be a win-win game. When I see... Uh, politicians, for example, federal and provincial, you know, in the province of Ontario, we can get, they can get along quite well, or they can fight. It depends on the situation, it depends on the, on the political situation. But I've noticed that it is possible for the two levels, those two levels, to get along very well. And that is to the benefit of everybody, including them. So um, we're not going to change the constitutional situation of this country with respect to jurisdiction. I think we, we are stuck with what we have, but we can do a much better job. And I think that's the point I'm, I would like to make. Thank you. Senator Skema.